Hey coffee nerds, I'm back, welcome back, and if it's your first time, welcome, because today we're going to be going over the new Exa Grind, this is a manual grinder from Wakako, and probably long awaited because they've been making a myriad of, of different coffee brewers, mostly espresso oriented, where you can make coffee basically anywhere in the world, I've done it, airplanes, boats, mountains, hiking, hotels, wherever you find yourself, but never had a way to grind it with, with, with their own product, of course. So this is the new product. I've been using it for a year and a half now, uh, some different prototypes and that kind of thing, but it just got released to the public. So I'm excited to, to walk you through it, some of, the, some of the details, the quality, the pricing, and some, some little specs. But one of the questions that we keep getting asked is how does it brew with the Pico Presso? How does it work well with the Pico Presso? Can it grind? for espresso. So we will, we will get to that, I will address that, and we're gonna brew a little bit together. Um, but one thing I wanted to show you was how it compares, for example, to, to this other hand grinder. I love manual grinders. I've been using this one for about six years now. This is from a company formerly called Hellor. And um, yeah, I've taken it everywhere with me as well. It's great for filter coffee, but I've noticed that it was very hard to grind for espresso. It basically took forever. And by the time that I got there, maybe it wasn't quite the right <laughs> grind size, so I'd have to do it all over again. So this is a great grinder too. Really like the, uh, now it's called option O, but I wanted to share with you that with the Exa grind, I really can grind for espresso and I can do it in under a minute and a half. So a minute and 30 seconds. One little uh, opinion piece that I have about manual grinders as well, as I mentioned, I really like them because I find that you can get the same quality that you might get from a, an electric grinder, but for a much lower price, relatively lower, and portable. So I feel like it's a win-win. You get a great grind uh, and you get an exercise. So it's a win-win-win. And then of course you can bring it anywhere with you. So if you like nomadic brewing like I do, this is a great choice. But let's go through a few of the, the specs here. So it's machine milled, it's, uh, it's got an aluminum unibody frame, 38 millimeter stainless steel burrs, and the, the size between adjustments, so you'll see there are little clicks in here, the size between is 33 microns, so if you're comparing that to other grinders, uh, that's what you get, but uh, as I mentioned, I find it works well for a range of different brewers from filter to espresso. It's got a great grip to it, but one of the things that I find really, really practical is this handle. So at first glance, it doesn't really seem, it seems a little bit odd. It's not your typical round uh, grip, but it fits super nicely on here, very compact. And once you start grinding with it, you will, you will see that it actually is quite ergonomic and uh, fits nicely in your hands or in your fingers. Also, when it comes to price, I find this very well priced, uh, especially even in, compared to this one over here, which came out to around $200 USD, this one is 120 USD plus tax. So I find that to be very affordable, especially given the quality that it has and the size, the compactness. So if you're, you are more concerned about travel, bringing it with you on your, on your journeys, then this is a great option. One last thing that I will mention is it says it fits 20 grams, but if you use a, a lighter roasted coffee, a little bit more dense, I've been actually able to fit 25 grams in here. So if that's something you're concerned about, I can get up to 25 grams if it's a slightly lighter roast. So that is the Exagrind in a nutshell, but enough talk, let's take some action. I know you're here probably, likely, potentially, because you wanna see how the Exagrind will work with the Pico Presso. And if you haven't heard about the Pico Presso, it is a portable espresso maker. And I made a, more of an in-depth video comparing the Nano Presso, the predecessor to the Pico Presso. And so if you haven't seen that, click the link up here. We go through both brewers, but for today, I'm gonna break it down really quickly for everyone and then let's make an espresso. So we've got the typical portafilter basket, the shower screen, which comes in here. And then we've got the basket itself, which is an 18 gram basket, 52 millimeters. And then in the top, we actually have all the tamping capabilities that we're gonna need. So we've got the lid, of course, we've got the dosing ring, and then we've got the tamper. So I'm kind of fire through this because some of you have already seen it. And uh, I just wanna show you how it works 
with the extra grind and how we can kind of troubleshoot to find the perfect grind for your espresso. And today we're gonna use this, this local, locally roasted coffee grown in Mexico and they said it was better for espresso. Let me boil some water and let's get brewing. Okay, so we don't need this stuff for now. So we're gonna go through a little bit of the, the grinding process. So we've got our grinder and the, the way to adjust is just by taking this bottom piece off, holding the handle on and checking out the clicks. Now there's no markings on the grinder adjustment, but you can just go back to zero and count away. And if you're always using the same grind size, maybe you're adjusting a little bit, you're gonna have to use a bit of memory to, to know which click you're on, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 is the starting place that I'm gonna use for this coffee. I've been testing it out and it tends to work pretty good at 12. I could go up to 13 and try that too. So maybe we'll, we'll do a little bit of both, but let's start grinding. 18 grams in. And as I mentioned, I can generally get out 18 grams at the espresso grind in approximately a minute and a half, one minute, 30 seconds. All right, so you can feel the last few beans being ground, that's perfect. I always just get rid, rid of some of the static just by whacking it and then uh, now it's time to brew. So my hot water is ready to go. It's 100 degrees Celsius boiling point. And uh, now we just have to do a little bit of a preheat on the Pico, that helps. So put that there while I do this part. So put in 18 grams as we, we pre-measured. Now all you have to do is take this off, use the little distributor tool that comes with, fluff it up, it's a technical term. Do that a few times, just make sure there's no boulders, we don't want any channeling here. And then we are ready to tamp away. So we've got the tamper, super easy, just put it on top. And then once it gets to the bottom, that's a good tamping pressure, tends to work well. Then you put the shower screen right on top and we can pump out our, our Pico Presso into the sink or dump it out or whatever you want to do to preheat it. And then I like to just pop this right on the bottom, get it ready, preloaded, go back to our boiling water and then pop the lid on, grab our scale and a nice glass espresso cup. Let's do this. Six, seven, eight is kind of the recommended amount of pumps to get the pre-infusion going. Usually I wait around 10 seconds just to get that coffee puck nice and, nice and moist <laughs> with the hot water going in there. And then let's continue pumping. And if you look from the up from the underneath, you can start to see some of the espresso coming through. So nice smooth pump and as you can see it makes a really nice stream. You might get a little channeling, a little bit of spraying, but that is that's pretty normal, especially when you have a slightly lighter roasted coffee. It doesn't quite grab on like a darker roast, but I like the flavor of this. So I'm going to go to just over a one to two ratio, maybe 46 milliliters. So 18 in, 46 out. And here we have a nice espresso. You can see a little bit of the crema forming on the top. Not too much as I mentioned with the, the lighter roast, but I'm looking for some nice juicy, bright flavors from this, uh, from this Mexican coffee here. So let's try it out. Mm. Oh yeah. That's very nice, complex, good body to it, good mouthfeel. Of course, you can always play around, you can always adjust it. Maybe I wouldn't even go so long on it. Maybe I wanted a little bit shorter. Of course, I can, I can change that based on the amount of pumps with the Pico Presso, but I think that was, a, that was a good grind size. 12 clicks, 
again, you could go anywhere from 10 to, to 14 or 15. Try it out, but we always recommend around 12 to 14. But yeah, this is, this is great. I like a, a nice big double shot. Mm. But why don't I quickly show you something new, something people have been asking for as well to go with the Pico Presso, and that is the single shot basket. This is the new 12 gram basket. So I'll make another really quick brew here and uh, show you kind of how to adjust the grind size to make sure that we're gonna get a solid espresso out of this too. And so all you have to do is, I would probably try uh, 10 clicks. If, if uh, 12 clicks worked for the bigger basket, 18 grams, let's try 12 or 10 clicks for the single. And the reason why I grinded a little bit finer, for those of you who are wondering, is because we have less coffee to go through. So that's a bit of a barista trick. If you've worked as a barista before in the cafe, you'll know that uh, you know you have to change the grind size quite a lot, depending on you know different variables, temperature, and also the dose that you're using. And so some people have been asking, there's a 33 micron difference between uh, different numbers. Is that going to be an issue? I haven't had an issue with it, but if you are concerned. One thing you can do is go for a little bit of a coarser on the adjustment clicks and then dose up a little bit. So not too much, but maybe half a gram up and that will create more resistance. And so what we're doing here is we're making it finer to create more resistance because there's less coffee to go through. And this time I'm gonna do a one to two ratio. So 12 grams in, 24 milliliters out, it may be that we have to adjust, adjust the, the grind size because maybe 10 is not the optimal. Maybe it needs to be 11 clicks. Maybe it needs to be nine clicks, but let's see. It's all based on feeling and also taste, but also look. So I can see right now that it's coming out a little bit fast. I feel resistance here, but I do see that it's coming a bit quick and so the next time around, I might even try nine clicks, right? Because it's only passing through 12 grams of coffee, but I'm not gonna bore you with the dialing in. Maybe we'll save that for another video. Hope you enjoyed. I'm gonna enjoy this little single shot. Mm. And that is very good. That is even more complex, I think, than the other one. So it's always a little bit of play. Try to adjust the grind, adjust the water that you're using, uh, adjust the water temperatures, the coffee beans that you're using. I always recommend as fresh as you can for the Pico Presso in terms of getting a nice texture, getting a nice crema, and also uh, those nice fresh flavors. So thank you for joining this, uh, this Exa Grind overview, and hopefully that helps you in your, in your search for the perfect hand grinder. In the meantime, I'll be here sipping on my espresso. Please subscribe, like this video if you found it helpful, and as usual, I will see you in the next video. Mm. Cheers.